Um, Stephen, my first question is to you. Um, where did you, how did you come about this story in order to create it? Um, I was offered a book called SAS Road Heroes, uh, which is the definitive account of the formation of SAS, which was a, the first ever really uh, special forces unit, um, which came together in the early days of World War II. It was such an amazing, unlikely, incredible story that I just couldn't resist it. Connor, to you, what attracted you to the role of David? I think playing um, just someone. I mean, I mean, the the, the writing was was the main draw. Um, it was an experience to do these great big long epic scenes with actors that I very much admired, um, and then to be able to do so playing such a flawed and interesting person was something that I just couldn't, again, as Stephen said, couldn't resist. Uh, Stephen, to you, what was some of the difficulties you found shooting um, this in that era? Um, I think in terms of writing um, this story, one has to be aware that people were different. I mean, they were the same deep down emotionally, um, but people behaved differently. And I think that one of the things that uh, I wanted to capture was this sort of um, coolness that people had, or rather an understated way of approaching intense situations. So I actually met the sole survivor of the original SAS team, who was Mike Sadler, who's now 102. And when I was talking to him, he would describe battle situations and he would say, you know, we're, we're approaching the Italian line. They were throwing hand grenades, machine guns, mortars. It wasn't ideal. You know, it's not like I was terrified. It was intense. It wasn't ideal. And trying to get the, 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 the way that people were in, in that time where they weren't expressing themselves, they weren't sharing their emotions, everything was kept in. Um, I think in terms of writing um, this story, one has to be aware that people were different. I mean, they were the same deep down emotionally, um, but people behaved differently. And I think that one of the things that uh, I wanted to capture was this sort of um, coolness that people had, or rather an understated way of approaching intense situations. So I actually met the sole survivor of the original SAS team, who was Mike Sadler, who's now 102. And when I was talking to him, he would describe battle situations and he would say, you know, we're, we're approaching the Italian line. They were throwing hand grenades, machine guns, mortars. It wasn't ideal. You know, it's not like I was terrified. It was intense. It wasn't ideal. And trying to get the, 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 the way that people were in, in that time where they weren't expressing themselves, they weren't sharing their emotions, everything was kept in. Uh, yeah, Connor, to you, David has a bit of a fiasco jumping out of the plane in that first episode. First question is, have you ever jumped out of a plane? And B, did you do, like, did you actually jump out of a plane for the part? I wasn't sure how that kind of worked out there. I've never jumped out of a plane uh, and I'll, I never will especially after this. Um, it was an amazing rig that was created by um, an amazing stunt choreographer called Neil Thomas, who actually worked on uh, the Dark Knight Rises in the opening sequence with the plane jacking. He did all of that. Um, he's a former commando, former Falklands War veteran himself. Um, and he created this whole kind of rig police system uh, that would, it was basically a kind of bungee that would catch you at a point, take you up and catch you. And then we did a whole other thing on this big plane uh, rig that was, that would move. That was actually more for the, um, the interior of the plane leading right up to jumping out. Um, it was on a, a huge gimbal. It was really cool. Yeah, after, like, it's always in my head, like, I want to jump out of a plane, but then I see something like what happened with the, uh, you and this your character in this series, and I'm like, yeah, that's probably why I will never jump out of a plane. <laughs> um, Stephen, to you, I love the use of the songs within the series. What was the idea behind using kind of a more modern songs in this era? Yeah, I, I think that um, using contemporary or near contemporary music is a, is a, a sort of shorthand way of getting communication with an audience who were watching something that took place quite a long time ago. In other words, the emotions, the feelings are the same and they are expressed almost subconsciously by the music. 
Uh, we do use some 1940s music, uh, but it, in that great big desert landscape, you need music that fills the space. And I think the sensibility of people who made heavy metal and punk is very similar to the sensibility of the soldiers who were in the SAS. So it's a perfect fit. Yeah, I agree. Um, Connor, to the relationship I think that I love the most between you on the screen was with Jack O'Connell. Can you, what was it like working with him? Yeah, amazing. Jack is such an incredible actor and one someone who I'd obviously looked up to um, coming into the business and someone that I mean I'd look at and think, God, if I could have just a, a quarter of the career that he's had, I'd be very, very happy. Um, but he's also an incredible person. He's extremely generous and he's extremely warm and very gentle despite his many of his performances um it was fantastic I, I i really enjoyed those great moments as you say building that love story in many ways that happens in this kind of master master and um dog relationship almost or rather master and wolf as paddy would probably like you to think um, all right, so my final question is, um, and, and see if you can answer it first. Um, obviously, Sterling is a bit of a drinker, so I want to know what's your go-to drink is. Champagne. Connor? There you are. <laughs> <laughs> right, that was, <laughs> he already, right, right away, like he didn't even miss a beat. I love that. <laughs> I, I, I think I just love a good pint, a pint of Guinness, I'll say, and I'll probably make people very happy by saying that too. <laughs>